This um, set of notes about basic chemistry is about chemi chemical bonds. And again, there are lots of words that you need to know. Some of them are here, others are not. Here's the list that you need to be responsible for in this particular part of the lesson, this particular lesson from this unit. We're talking about chemical bonds and chemical equations and reactions. So what is a chemical reaction? Here's a definition from Wikipedia. A chemical reaction is a process that leads to the transformation of one set of chemical substances into another. So how does this happen? It happens by breaking and reforming chemical bonds. And we're going to talk about chemical bonds and how they get broken and reformed. So the reason you care about this is because of something called the law of conservation of matter and energy. And it states that matter and energy can be neither created nor destroyed, but only transformed. That means change from one form to another. Um, this was originally stated in, back in the 18th century by Antoine Lavoisier. So what does that mean? It means that you can't end up with more or less stuff, substance, than you start with. So whatever amount, mass of things that you start with, that's going to be the mass of your products. And that's why we need to know how this works. Okay? So here's a chemical equation. A chemical equation is a sentence that tells you about the reaction that you are talking about. Okay? In a reaction, you have, you have the um, reactants. Those are the things that are found on the left. The arrow is kind of like the equal sign. And the things on the right are called the products. Here's what has to happen. You have to have the same number of atoms of each element on each side of the equation in order to, to have a balanced equation and not create or destroy any matter. Okay? We, show the, we show the number of atoms in a molecule of a substance by using a subscript. A subscript is a little number at the lower right of the, of the symbol for the um, element and it tells us how many atoms of each element are in a compound. Here we have H2, which is hydrogen, and O2, which is oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen are among seven elements on the periodic table that are what we call diatomic. That means they do not exist as single atoms in nature. They exist as pairs of atoms or in compounds with other elements. And so you'll learn more, again, you'll learn more about that in chemistry, but hydrogen and oxygen are two of those. When they're in compounds, though, they don't have to have two of them. They're good because their bonds that they form between themselves and other atoms are going to take up all those places. It has to do with the sharing of electrons and those valence numbers we talked about before. In water, you have two atoms of hydrogen and only one of oxygen. When there's no number beside the symbol, that means there's only one atom of that element. Here's the deal. You can't ever change subscripts. Okay. You can put a number in front, which is called a coefficient, but you can't change the subscripts. Please, please, please do not write these numbers as superscripts, like, a, like H squared or O squared. They only are sons, uh, subscripts. The superscripts refer to something else in chemistry or it, in, as a number in math, like squaring or, tr or, or cubing a number. But in chemistry, these subscripts have to go at the lower part to the lower right of the symbol of the, of the element. Since you can't change the subscripts, you have to be able to use some kind of number as a multiplier. And that's where the coefficient comes into play. Coefficients, just like in math, are multipliers of everything that follows. So when I put a 2 in front of H2, okay, that gives me 2 times 2, or 4 total atoms of hydrogen. There's no coefficient in front of oxygen, so I have two total atoms of oxygen. And then when I put the two coefficient in front of the water, the, um, the equation or the, the formula for the compound H2O, dihydrogen monoxide, to gives, you multiply each thing within that. So two times two is four, two times one is two. So that gives me four hydrogens, two oxygens, just like we have on the other side of the equation. Now the equation is balanced. This is something that's not difficult to do, but it does take some practice. Some of you may have done some of this, depending on what teachers you've had before. Others may not have ever done it before, but we're going to do some practice on it in class. So what does it mean? Well, an entire reaction with hydrogen and oxygen producing water requires two molecules of hydrogen. That's the 2H2, and that gives us four atoms of hydrogen. One molecule of oxygen, O2, which gives us two atoms of oxygen, and it's going to produce two molecules of water, 
which gives us four atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen. Now we've completed the equation, we've completed the reaction without losing or gaining any matter. I'm going to include another video in the playlist uh, that will um, show you how to, how to balance equations and give you a little bit of practice on it. And again, we will do more practice in class.